welcome back to SV Blown Away. In this week's episode, we have a few holy moments. And I might risk burning down the boatyard, welding up the fuel tank. But don't tell anyone. We are Natalie and Ian. Together, we are living the dream on board our 44 foot steel catch. Join us each week as we share our adventure with you. And please take the time to subscribe. If you don't want all those nasty notifications, don't hit the bell. But if you want to know when we put a video out, ring it. The wheels have fallen off the wagon. <laughs> no, they haven't. It's just a small hole. Mm. Just a small hole in our diesel tank on the outside running diesel down the hull because the hull is our tank. So I will explain that via doodly. doodly. I'll do a doodly. I've done a doodly for a while, so I'll do a doodly so you can understand. Um, we have to pump fuel out. Here comes Doodly Girl with a really good explanation of the problem. Blown Away has a rolled steel hull. This outside hull is welded to steel frames. The engine is positioned in a central location and has diesel tanks either side of it, to port and starboard. These tanks contain 450 litres of fuel in each tank and the hull forms the exterior of these diesel tanks. Our fresh water tank is similar, but it is lower down in the keel, and this places all of the weight below the water level. The situation we find ourselves in now is we have a small hole in the outside of the diesel tank, dripping diesel into the yard slowly. Today's the day. We need to weld this over the pinhole in our fuel tank. Our fuel tank being the hull of the boat. Um, I'm not looking forward to doing this, I have to be honest. So we're going to fill our diesel tank with water to stop the risk of an explosion. Okay, I have my crocodile clip cable coming out onto deck. This is more MacGyver than MacGyver. This is MacGyver on steroids. And then uh, Nat is now attaching our pump to the guardrail with the best granny notch in his house. Hey! What granny notch? No wonder the dog escapes so often. Hey, he escaped on your watch too. Dog never escaped from any of my knots. Yes, he did. Whatever. Okay, so we have power to the pump. Ready? Yeah, go. Ah! Okay, so the pump is active. So now we open up our filler neck and the diesel should be pretty much to the top. We know that for a fact. Why do we know that for a fact, Nat? Because we keep it topped up in winter. So as to prevent condensation. Yes. So yours truly was going backwards and forwards with a 20 litre jerry can to the petrol station because we're running the Dickinson's heaters because now we need to pump 450 litres ish out of the starboard tank and into these barrels here's one we made earlier in blue peter fashion so um yeah i've had better days Is it going to stay primed? Should do, yeah. If I sell this boat, I'm selling it with empty fuel tanks. Yeah. You see that we've moved the hose down to the engine room because that we couldn't get the hose. We just couldn't get the hose in the right place. It just went sucking diesel. So I had to disconnect the engine room hoses and. Uh, take it off the bottom of the tank. Having spent a few hours pumping all of the diesel from the tank into the containers, we then filled the tank with water to expel any fumes and prevent any risk of explosion. Firstly, Ian ground the wooden bung so it was flush to the hull. 
cleaned up the metal around the patch. Ian then started to weld the plate on the outside of the tank. The small red triangular item is actually a very strong magnet that is used to hold the plate in place while Ian tacks it in position. These short bursts of weld that Ian is doing at the moment is just to tack the plate into position. Uh, you grab me a hammer, isn't it? Uh, yeah. What sort of hammer? The big one? Any. Just need to bend this back down a little bit. Here, Ian is using the chipping hammer to push the plate flush to the hull. Good. Having cleaned up the weld, Ian then does a continuous bead all the way around the plate, thus making it diesel tight. Yay, he's my hero! Everybody needs an Ian! The final job was just to cut off the stud with a grinder, just leaving the plate. To the surveyor, it's just going to look like a closed up seacock because we've currently got a couple of hundred litres of water in our diesel tank. So we're going to clean our bilge out um, whilst draining the water from the tank. Now we have to get the water... <laughs> so dangerous. Children with toys. Hey, we know what happened to you with the staple gun. Leave it at home. So, uh, yeah, we're now going to get in here, empty the water out of the fuel tank. There is a drain down there which goes straight into the engine room. Um, we have to wash the engine room out anyway, so the plan is to hoover up as much dust and dirt that we can, and then what we can't hoover up we will wash out using a hose pipe. Ready? Yeah, go for it. Water. Nice. Our diesel tank. Yeah, which allowed us to do the welding, which is now going under the engine into the bilge. Hey grandma, I used your walking stick. I used to have a around the injectors and around the uh, oil filler there's a little bit of oil it's not leakage it's more so much where we've been topping up the system etc just general spillage and we're going to use a little bit of brake cleaner on that just to get it off I like to be able to see where there's oil leaking from so if we keep this clean it makes it much easier okay. to spot a problem yeah but just put like a couple of litres in or something and then stop. And I'll check to make sure that we've got no leakage inside, all right? Ready? No. With all of the water drained from the diesel tank, we're now in the position to replace all of the fuel back into the tank and check for leaks. Having checked for leaks and found none, it's now time to replace the liquid gold into the tank where it belongs. 
and now we can get back to the job that we were doing before we spotted the leak. So this, this is the reason we are out of the water, partly the reason. Um, this has been plaguing us for the last eight months. Let the games begin. We've sheeted off the boat the best we can to protect this this guy's boat. We've put plastic sheeting down and uh, yeah, start grinding. Uh, don't believe this is a perforation. We've smacked it out with a hammer. Fairly confident that it is just surface corrosion, although it's scaled somewhat during the summer, but we can get that off. So let's go. That's the worst of it cleaned up. I'll needle gun it to get into those little pits. I'll give this a quick wipe down with some acetone. That's actually paint thinners, but close enough. I don't like acetone, it flushes off too fast. I'm just gonna put some paint on this just to stop it going corroded overnight. See, this has to have a epoxy ferrin put back into it, which I will get around to doing. But yeah, get a bit of primer onto that just to stop it going rusty. Hmm. So apart from the hole, we're actually quite good. In that, what? <coughs> we could send some pieces of blown away. <laughs> we could send pieces of blown away to our patrons. Blown away to pretty much everyone. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who watches our video that wants a piece of blown away, let me know. There's plenty of it on the floor right now. <laughs> Gonna need our steel stock out from inside the um, aft locker. Whatever's in there, just drag it out since we can't buy any here, which is just ridiculous. Apparently, nobody does steel boats here. Brush cam. If you were a normal boat owner, you'd be bricking it about now, wouldn't you? You'd be like, oh my God, there's a hole in the boat and there's no one here to weld it. There's no one here to do the job. Are you claiming we're not normal boat owners? No, not really. <laughs> we're not standard. <laughs> we're not your ace typical. I, uh, I mean, we know with Neil. So we've got a friend here, Neil, who needs his keel welded up and there's no one here to do it. And they've quoted him summer, like as vague a date as possible, right? Summer. That's when they're gonna. Well, that's when they've got a welder available. Is summer? It's March. When summer? August? How many months is that? Like four, five months away. That's nuts. That's crazy. And you're not allowed a contractor in the yard. You can't bring anyone in from outside to do the job. So we've had to get his keel out of the yard so somebody else can pick it up. It's 200 kilos. We we, we manhandled it yesterday for him. So for us, like if we'd found that hole, like we have now, we found a, a, a hole. We, we couldn't get that done here. We've got to do it ourselves. And we've been in this position so many times, haven't we, where we can't use contractors because they're not available or they've done a run or they've broken their back or died. <laughs> we've had contractors die. So this is kind of a, it's kind of normal for us, really. And it's quite interesting that after six years of being on this boat that Nat just kind of accepts the fact there's a hole in it. I, I, I'm not sure whether I should investigate this blister. So... He investigated the blister on my advice because I thought, well, why not? We're on an easier yard period than we thought. And he found a hole, a big hole, as he's shown you already. That hole just there. <laughs> like you can put your hands through there and serve drinks through it. Yeah. Hmm. On template. There's my template, so I'm just going to cut this out of this plate. It's a piece I've got hanging around. This is hull plate, so this is the thick stuff that's in the, actually in the hull, not on the top sides. The top sides are thinner. I think the hull is six and probably the top sides are four. 
Um, so this is a bit heavier than I need, but it's the only piece I've got, it's the only piece I can get. So we're cutting out of this. I'm going to skin down the sides a little bit because I need to blend it in on the hull or else I'm going to have a big, it will, it will look like a patch if I'm not careful. So I need to blend that in. Um, yeah. Welding gear's ready. with steel boats I'm sure uh, will look at this and go ooh what an ugly repair and I'd agree with you overplating and little patches like this are horrible but the reality is I'm in a gravel yard with no steel supplies even though we've been begging people to help us with stores etc so we're down to doing what we can with what we've got and I mean, that, that now is more or less where I want it, and I, I don't know what else I can take out to get it better. I mean, it is gonna stand proud. I'm gonna have to go some to blend this in. The fairing's only a couple of mil thick here, and the plate is six mil. So it's gonna, but it ain't gonna look any worse than that lump, and it definitely won't leak. So uh, yeah, yeah, like that is fine, and then it won't run into the scupper just in case. I shouldn't need to. The ferry material's far enough away; it's not going to cause an issue. Ian's just made a plate. You can see it just in there, the shiny bit. Okay, and he's just about to weld that in place with a few tacks, and then see what happens from there. Hopefully no big fires, but just in case we have two of our fire extinguishers ready and Ian has a hose outside. He's tacked it in position and now he's just going to run the full lines. Standard. I can't get any closer to the wood, so the wood is going to get sealed with epoxy. Yay! <laughs> well, watertight. Let's come inside to mix in some hardener into the epoxy resin. We use the West system. So we use the 105 resin and the 406 silica. And all that does, you just thicken up the resin to make it into a paste. So that when you apply it to the sides of the hull, it doesn't all run away. But and, uh, why aren't you in a thong bikini walking along the beach? <laughs> Summers have got shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> weld up inside of that. I can weld it on the inside, but I can't weld it on the outside. But on the outside, this morning, there was a great big hole there. Yeah. Now there isn't. <clears throat> I don't know why people take so long fixing boats. I've never understood it. <laughs> oh no, did you stick the spreader to the boat? <laughs> I'm going to leave it in there, the best part of it. That will help flatten it out. Exactly. Put a couple of these plastic spreaders in. In fact, I saw it the other day on one 
one video where somebody used lots of plastic stuff to to build out their home near their rudder post. Yeah, who was that? Can you remember? <laughs> Worked really well. You just like had a bit of a a plastic dairy milk block. Having completed the little bit of welding that needed doing, we can now fare the hull using a thickened epoxy. wait for this to dry out and then I'll come back over it with another coat and then if I wet block this again yeah. uh, it will go nice and flat and then it's ready for paint I'm not gonna get too anal about the paint finish because it is a patch repair at the end of the day but we didn't do any welding over here this is literally just um, epoxy repairs um, this was the repair in the side which was a tiny little crack just there but I've expand, expanded it out into um, a bigger area because I wasn't happy with the way the fairing was stuck to the hull. Um, I've got a couple of small little indents that I just want to kind of repair, but I don't want to mix up more epoxy with it. I've wet blocked it, so uh, um, using a, a wet foam sanding pad, I've gone over all of this now so that it's fairly flat. I could blue paint straight on top of this to be fair, I wouldn't be losing any sleep um, but we've mixed some epoxy up with some uh, colloidal um, powder in it so I'm just going to try and fair these little pinholes a little bit and the pinholes are just where there's um, air pockets in the epoxy so as you put the epoxy on you get an air pocket when you sand it off the air pockets exposed and you end up with these little pinholes so I'm just going to use a really fine compound just to um, fill those pinholes um, they're no problem, they're just cosmetic, but I want to get rid of them. So that's pretty much done. The welding that we did up here, um, same story, just uh, little pinholes and stuff that I want to get rid of. So I'll put some fairing compound into this. The steel plate is just there. You can see where some of it's been exposed here from sanding. Again, I wet blocked all of this. And the reason you're using a wet block is it carries the dust away. If you dry sand it, the dust clogs up the pad and then you don't sand properly and it gets all horrible. If you wet block it, I use a bucket of water and the sandpaper, um, the, the moisture carries the dust away. So that's pretty much ready for paint to be honest. Just a bit more primer on this, a bit more primer on that, and then this side's done. Yeah, it feathers in really well. All the little pinholes are gone. There is no replacement for elbow grease. The more time you put in in the preparation, the better the finish. And I want to get this paint back no. to how it was when we did it in Actio in 2019. I don't want this repair visible. You can barely see that plate I welded in.
This will need wet sanding again, which I'll do. And I'll feather in the little dryer patches here. And then I'll go over this with the polisher with a cutting compound. Now the cutting compound will blend the old paint into the new paint because the color, this is slightly faded in comparison to the new stuff. So the color match is not perfect, but it's good enough. And this is the bigger patch that I've just done. So the wet paint is here and then the dry paint is here. And as you can see, it doesn't look too bad. By the time that is flattened back with a 800 grit and polished, that will be okay. So if you look at it closely from this angle, you can see where the, the gray primer is bleeding through the paint. I actually need to put more blue on top of this to get rid of that gray primer, but it will go. I can't feel my arms. Okay, we're done. Got a bit of paint left over, but it's already got activator in it, so can't really use it. Honey, not yourself. It's the joys of painting uphill. <laughs> Pink rolls down the brush and then catches your hand. So, do you want to see, a good, uh, see the finish? I don't know how much of this is going to come out, but uh, new paint waiting to be polished. New paint. And this back here, then, this is. This is the polished paint, but yeah, I'm happy with that. It's come up all right, and we've already got some insects stuck in there, which means we've done it. We've done it properly. <laughs> Knowing that the minute we go alongside, we're probably going to scratch this at some point, or the dinghy comes up alongside of it, or whatever. It's not worth getting massively anal about the paint finish. She's a liverboard boat, not a uh, showpiece. We're not trying to sell the boat, we're trying to live on it. Hopefully we've kept your attention thus far. And next week we'll be starting on the deck repairs. As these cracks also shouldn't be there. It's not funny that. I don't know what you're chuckling at. It's not funny. Ah, oh, thank God that's over. We would like to say a great big thank you to all of our supporters on Ko-fi and on Patreon. You do really help to keep Ian sane. And for those of you who would like to support our videos for free, please subscribe to our channel, give it a thumbs up if you like the video and share it with your friends. We really hope you enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Do I have to be here next week?